Now, gravity probe B is going to measure that warping of space to higher precision than this uh, landmark experiment, if at least a factor of 10 higher, perhaps more. And we can understand how gravity probe B does that uh, in the language of uh, the missing inch that Francis Everett described. So here is the plane of the orbit uh, going around uh, the Earth, which is down at the center. And if the, plane, if the orbital plane were absolutely flat, uh, like this sheet of paper, then the gyroscope would point always in the same direction as it goes around and comes back to where it started, around and around, always pointing toward the guide star up here. But in fact, there's the missing inch. And so we can, uh, we can remove that missing inch by cutting this sheet down those uh, lines and pasting it together to form a cone. That cone is actually tangent to the warped surface, the bowl-like surface that I showed you in, in the graphic. So here is that cone, and it's e pretty easy to see what's going to happen on that cone. Uh, on that cone, uh, and you see it is, it is a cone, uh, you, uh, start, you start out uh, with, the, uh, gyro, uh, uh, with, with the gyro pointing in this direction, and you carry it around. This is identically the same set of arrows as on the previous diagram. And you come back, and it has turned. It's turned because of the missing inch. So you can do that yourself. You can just draw this, draw this uh, sheet on here and then cut out the cone, paste it together, and you see the turning of the gyroscope. So that is the uh, so-called, that's the principal cause of the so-called geodetic precession. Let me just wind up by making a few remarks about the significance of uh, this uh, wonderful measurement that we expect to be done uh, for astrophysics and cosmology. Suppose that the entire universe were rotating rigidly instead of being non-rotating, instead of just expanding. Suppose that in addition to expanding, it were rotating rigidly. Uh, how would we know? Well, you might say, well, we would know because we have our gyroscopes here and we see that uh, the stars move relative to the gyroscopes, but that's not the way it works. In general relativity, the angular momentum basically associated with all that motion of all the mass in the universe would drag space into a rotational motion near the Earth and the gyroscope would move right with the, with the rest of the uh, universe. And so it, w it would not be possible to have the gyro fail to point at the fixed stars, unless you have the Earth nearby spinning and influencing the pointing direction of the gyroscope more strongly than the rest of the universe is. And this is called Mach's principle, that inertia here is determined by the rotational state of the rest of the mass in the universe. Um, this effect of, uh, of the dragging of space into motion is terribly important in astrophysics around black holes. And if I could have my last graphic. Um, so here we see a black hole as the dot at the center, an accretion disk of gas orbiting around the black hole, and uh, it, that accretion disk is forced into the black hole's equatorial plane, it turns out, by the dragging of space into motion, a huge effect near the black hole. Uh, you see jets shooting out from the vicinity of the uh, black hole along the spin axis. And what is it that tells the jets what direction to point? It is precisely the dragging of space into motion. That's the only way that the black hole can communicate to the external universe what is the direction of its spin axis. In addition to that, it turns out that that dragging of space interacting with magnetic fields generates the enormous power that comes off in those jets. And so this frame dragging is terribly important in, uh, in the physics of black holes as well as in cosmology. And what gravity probe D B will do for us is it will, one, for the first time verify under controlled circumstances here in the solar system, one, that the, this effect exists, and two, it will tell, verify that it is uh, directly proportional to the angular momentum of spin of the Earth with, and will verify the proportionality constant so that we have that as a landmark here in front of us when we go out into the external universe to interpret our astrophysical and cosmological observations. So, Einstein's general relativity tells us that there are three aspects of warped space-time. 
there is a warping of space, which we have measured with rather high precision in the solar system already. There's a warping of time, that is, time slows down near massive bodies. That has also been measured with rather high accuracy. And then the third aspect is that the spin of the Earth or the Sun or any other body drags space into motion around itself like the air in a tornado. And that we have never seen in any definitive way. There have been hints of observations of it, but nothing definitive and clean enough to say that you have really seen it, and absolutely nothing that is quantitative. And the principal goal of Gravity Pro B, in my mind, is to see that effect, to measure it with high precision, to verify that the amount of dragging that is created is directly proportional to the spin angular momentum of the central body, to find out what the proportionality constant is. Uh, now, let me explain these three aspects of warped space-time in the context of a black hole, because what we are, our goal is to see quantitatively in the solar system and verify general relativity with regard to all three aspects of warped space-time so that we then can be able to understand definitively how these same phenomena are occurring in the distant universe in, uh, and doing major things in the distant universe. So uh, I brought my favorite black hole with me. Uh, and uh, this black hole uh, is actually made out of warped space and time, not out of rubber despite appearances. Uh, so if you take an equatorial slice through that black hole, you might have expected it would have the same geometry as a flat sheet of paper. But in fact, it doesn't. Uh, the circumference around that slice would be uh, much uh, smaller than you would expect, based, or the diameter would be much larger than you would expect based on the circumference. And the next, uh, uh, my first graphic illustrates that. In this first graphic you see in this trumpet horn shape, it's actually an exact depiction of the warped space around a black hole, the equator equatorial slice through it. This is uh, as seen by a hyper being in hyperspace in which our warped universe uh, is embedded. Uh, this is the language a science fiction writer uses. Uh, it's, our universe is curved in hyperspace. You also see two other features here. Uh, well, let me say the, the horizon of the black hole, the surface is down at the very bottom. It's a circle at the very bottom because I've suppressed one dimension. We're only looking at the equatorial slice. And uh, d down near the horizon, uh, the color coding shows red going to black. And this is depicting the warping of time. The flow of time is slowed near the horizon, actually to a halt right at the horizon. As you move back away from the horizon, uh, the rate of flow of time picks up, and that's shown by the colors of the rainbow as you go to the violet very far away. The third aspect of the warping depicted on there is the whirling motion of space around the horizon. Space is moving uh, at a very high clip uh, in the vicinity of the horizon, as indicated by the long uh, white arrow. As you go farther up the cone, uh, or up the trumpet horn, away from the horizon, the uh, angular momentum of space, or angular velocity of space's whirl gets slower and slower and slower. And in fact, uh, once you're away from the vicinity of the horizon, it is predicted to be, be, obey an inverse cube law. The angular velocity of whirl of space goes as the inverse cube of distance uh, from the body, uh, and it's proportional to the spin angular momentum of the body. Uh,